Hi, my name is Faith Augustine. And I'm Marcus Bird. And this is a scene from Hedda Gabler by Henrik Ibsen. Good afternoon, Judge. Welcome back. Good afternoon, Mrs. Tessman. And now, Judge, I'm going to shoot you. No, no, don't point that at me. This is what you get for sneaking in the back way. Ah! Have you gone crazy? Oh dear, I didn't hit you, did I? I wish you would stop playing this game. Very well then, Judge. Come in. Damn it, Hedda. Are you still playing with guns? I mean, what were you shooting at? Oh, just killing time, Judge. Shooting into the blue. Allow me, madam. <laughs> yes, well, I know this old friend very well. And the case? <laughs> well, that is enough, that kind of fun, for one day. Well, what in God's name am I supposed to do with myself? Haven't you had any visitors? Not a one. Everyone we know is in the country. And Tessman? As soon as he'd eaten, he ran off to his aunties. I don't think he was expecting you to show up so early. I should have suspected. Well, that was stupid of me. Why stupid? Because then I would have come even earlier. Well, there would have been no one here to receive you. I've been up in my room dressing ever since lunch. Well, surely there's a little crack in the door through which we could have conferred. Mm, you forgot to arrange it. An unforgivable oversight. Well, I guess we'll just have to settle down here together and wait. Tessman won't be back for a while. I will strive to be patient. Well, well, I ask first. Well, then let's have a nice little chat, shall we, Mrs. Tessman? Doesn't it seem, Judge, like an absolute eternity since we last spoke? I mean, a little small talk last night and this morning, but I don't count that. You mean a conversation like this, just two of us? Yes, I guess that's roughly what I mean. Every day I wandered around wishing you were back home. The same holds true for me. For you? Mrs. Hedda, I understood that you were just ecstatic on your trip. Oh, yes. Just ecstatic. Well, that's what Tessman always said in his letters. Oh, him. Well, yes, I guess it is an ecstasy for him to go rooting about over libraries or museums, copying out of parchments or documents or whatever you call them. Well, that is his calling in life. For the most part, anyway. Indeed it is. But it isn't mine. What about me? You. Oh, Judge, you don't know. I've been bored to death. Do you? Do you really mean that? Really? You know I do. Try passing six months without meeting a single person you can talk to. I think I'd care for that. And that's not the worst part, Judge. What is? Spending every minute with one person. Yes. Morning, noon, and night, day in and day out. I said every minute. So you did. But Tessman is such a clever fellow. I'd think it would be quite... My dear Judge Brett, Tessman is an academic. That he is. And I'm sure that you'll agree with me that academics are not a great deal of fun to travel with. Not on the long haul, anyway. Not even the academic one loves. Oh, please don't use that revolting word. Mrs. Hedda! Why don't you try? Try passing every minute listening to the history of civilization, morning, noon, Every and... day of one's life. Yes! Yes! Yes, and, and now there's this obsession with his speciality. The textile mills of Brabant of the 14th century. It's pure torture. 
Then tell me, given all this, how did it happen that you... That I married George Tessman. Dear God, is that so very strange? Well, yes and no, Mrs. Hedda. I danced myself out, Judge. I wasn't getting any younger. No, I don't want to say that. I don't want to think it either. You certainly have no reason to. Oh, reasons. And one thing about George Tessman. You can't tell me he's not an utterly respectable choice. Utterly respectable, thoroughly dependable? Good God, yes. So, he's disciplined about his research. It's quite likely, isn't it, that he'll go far in his field? Well, I assume that you believed, like everyone else, that Tessman would one day make quite a name for himself. Yes, I did. And then, when he came around begging for the privilege of looking after me, I thought, why not? No, no, no. When you look at it like that... Well, it was certainly more than any of my other admirers were offering me, Judge. <laughs> well, I'm not prepared to speak for all the admirers. I'm sure you're well aware that, in theory, anyway, I've always had the utmost respect for the bonds of matrimony. But in my particular case... I never case, permitted myself to any hopes of you, Judge. All I want is a close circle of intimate friends. Nice, decent people to whom I can be of use in one way or another. In whose homes I can come and go as... as a trusted friend. Of the man of the house, you mean? Preferably of the mistress. But of the man, too, of course. Certain, shall we call them... Triangular arrangements can be immensely satisfying for everyone involved. Oh, I'm sure. I'll admit there were times on my trip where I longed for a third person to talk to. But it was always just the two of us, alone together in yet another tiny little cramped railway compartment. Well, fortunately, the honeymoon is over now. But the train will go on. And on. I've only come to the first stop in line. Well, then jump out. Take a little exercise. Stretch your legs, Mrs. Hedda. I'll never jump out. Never? No, because there will always be someone there waiting. Who There's will stare at your legs? Is that it? Precisely. Oh, come on. I don't care for that sort of thing. I'd rather keep my seat. Stay right where I am. Alone together. Very well. But what if someone were to climb into the compartment and join the couple? Well, that would be quite different. Uh, a trusted friend who understands. Able to converse on all sorts of thrilling topics. But not in the least an academic. No, well, that would be a relief. is complete. And the train rolls on. <laughs>